Hi, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store and this week we're going to talk about Coast Ukuleles. This is actually the second time I filmed this video. It's one of those situations where I couldn't sleep last night. I came in and I was so hot and ready to film and talk about these ukuleles that um, I had some technical issues because I was in t too much of a hurry. So here I am filming it again for you. So I'm going to be wearing different outfits throughout the video. It's going to be a little bit like going to see a big act at a stage show. Lots of costume changes, but don't let that put you off. Coast ukuleles. Based in Petaluma, California. Romeo and I had the pleasure of visiting Kavai and the family uh, back in January this year. We saw the, one of the ukuleles you're going to see today uh, hung up on the wall of the workshop and we talked about the process and the love involved in making these instruments. And that, that seems to be the key thing here. There's, there's, uh, there's this thing in the ukulele world that I feel kind of cringe talking about as a Brit on the other side of the world. But you know, that aloha spirit, the thing that encompasses the ukulele and makes it what it is. The most real feeling I've had of somebody building instruments for the right reasons uh, is, has come from Coast. And the one-off pieces that we've had uh, truly are up there in the 1% of the things that have brought me to tears as somebody who works with ukuleles and has done for 16 years. When the Coast ukuleles uh, come in, everyone stops what they're doing, we open them up, and we just sit there and we talk about them and we get excited and I really hope that comes across in this video. We're going to look at coast number 73 today and coast number 74. Two very different ukuleles with very different stories that share the same aloha spirit. First up today, we're going to look at Coast Ukulele number 73. Look at it. <laughs> we just, what can I say about this? This is just absolutely stunning. The wood in question is Tasmanian blackwood, which is obviously not Hawaiian color, but shares very similar tonal properties. And I find actually look wise, a good piece, a good piece of Tasmanian blackwood looks very similar to a high grade piece of Hawaiian koa. And being the same kind of hardwood, they share the same tight mid-frequency response when they're being used and when they're being played. Previous coast ukuleles we had were Hawaiian koa in the live edge, but to see a piece of Tasmanian blackwood used in this way is a rare treat. The sound hole is live edge, so this is an imperfect piece of wood split into two, book matched and then used to create the live edge sound hole, you know, the actual wood as it is, rather than formed and shaped and cut. Uh, you don't see too many live edge ukuleles. It's something that I think Kavai probably knows um, the coast ukuleles are most well known for. Certainly, the way I found coast ukulele was by seeing a live edge koa ukulele for myself and saying, I'm, I must try this and feel this and see this and experience it. Uh, you have maple trim, so you have maple front and back binding on this ukulele with twin sound ports, side ports, so can you see me? Here I am. So this is suitable for a left-hander or a right-hander. In fact, Kavai has made this lefty friendly by putting dots on both sides of the neck and it's a maple binding on a Tasmanian blackwood neck. Really figured neck actually, lovely figure into the neck. The neck is satin, but the body is um, a kind of buff back uh, water-based gloss. You have a rock maple fingerboard with zero coaty block inlays. Block inlays are among my favorite things ever in instrument world. Well, when you're a player and you're looking down, block inlays to me, certainly they remind me of the late 70s, early 80s of guitars, which is not necessarily a good thing, but I like it. Um, the zero coaty blocks look great when they're matched with the side dots there. Going up to this motif, this absolutely stunning nighttime scene made using stabilized dyed inlaid pieces of wood coming together to make the nighttime motif. It's just stunning. It's absolutely gorgeous. You've got the nighttime sky, the clouds, the sea, the cliff edge, the beach. It's all there. It's all there. It's a piece of art. I love when art meets function, when musical instruments become more than just musical instruments. That's, 
that's the thing that makes me get emotional as somebody who works with them for a living. I just love these. Previous Live Edge ukuleles we've had have had a very decorative inlay down the fingerboard. This one, all of that craft and time has gone into this stunning nighttime scene here. The coast logo is actually a half moon and you have here the, uh, uh, the half moon coast logo in the scene. You have gold goto planetary tuners with ivoroid buttons and uh, other features about how you would play a coast ukulele that are important. It has a radius fingerboard, so a 12 inch radius fingerboard. For those unfamiliar, most ukulele fingerboards are completely flat and the, uh, the 12 inch radius is just a slight curve. So if you're playing bar chords, it will naturally work to the curve of your finger. You have a zero fret with a bone nut and saddle and the zero frets there to improve intonation. So rather than the scale length starting at the nut, it starts at this zero point here. So there are a few features here that set Coast apart from everything else. You don't see too many of these things, certainly not on manufactured instruments, but in, on these one-off builds, um, all of these things coming together really help make a Coast ukulele special. I'm gonna give Live Edge number 73 a play for you now and see what you think. The next ukulele we're going to look at today is completely unique. This is a ukulele where the story is in the headstock inlays. Can you tell what that is? Well, that's a water tower. And this ukulele is made using a piece of reclaimed, um, repurposed, salvaged western red cedar from a Seattle, Washington based water tower that was um, was knocked down. I believe I read somewhere on Kavai's build progress that this piece of wood was gifted to him by Aaron Keim from Bean Sprout Ukuleles and it's great to see it being used here. The back and sides are myrtle so you've got another west coast based wood along with the front so you've got an old piece of wood here with some fa just fantastic uh, myrtle timber for the back and sides. What kind of sound do you get? Well, you get something very modern when you pair these woods together. You know, Western Red Cedar is a great soft wood, very projecting, very loud, uncompromising, and clean. 
you, you know, you're not going to play something with a cedar top. It's not going to hide your mistakes the same way a hardwood like Koa might. You know, you play intricate pieces on this with lots of dynamics and it just keeps on giving. And Myrtle, for me, is uh, a wood that's underutilized in ukulele building. A lot of luthiers build with it because it has... Uh, unique tonal properties. It's not quite like maple, it's not quite like rosewood. It's kind of a soft, reflective, loud wood. So when you pair these two together, what you're getting is dynamics and uh, a very modern sound, a kind of recording crisp sound, high definition sound. So the two ukuleles we looked at today, you've got something traditional, um, it almost feels very Hawaiian in that live edge Tasmanian blackwood, and then you've got something ultra modern, um, almost kind of like a 90s breed love um, through to Taylor guitars, you know, something very um, contemporary in number 74 here. The rosette is a water tower themed rosette, you'll see it's inlaid pieces, almost like the top of a well. You have a stabilized myrtle fingerboard, something I've never seen in 16 years on a ukulele. So it feels very similar to me um, to Walnut or Palfero. It's a, a really lovely um, kind of absorbent wood, very, very good under the fingers. Once again, you have that 37 mil nut width with the zero fret. a very unique neck shape and depth on coast ukuleles with um, almost like the Miller style. It's not rounded, it's almost squared off in sections. So it feels um, like it's fitting to the wrist behind you. Um, it's another very modern thing. It's, it's the kind of thing you only really see on uh, instruments where the necks are shaped by hand rather than kind of on a production line. You have on the back here a walnut uh, back plate with the Goto Planetary Tuners. You have a myrtle neck, so myrtle all round on this ukulele apart from the front. And I just, I love this ukulele. It's more understated than the live edge and it's not as instantly in your face, but I love the story it tells both when you look at it and when you play it. Um, but <laughs> you're in for a treat whether you're the audience member or the performer with this. Let's give number 74 a play and see what you think. Kavai for me is a very inspirational person. Um, as a young dad myself, I say young, you know, I'm in my mid thirties, but as a single dad, 
I found coast ukuleles at a very interesting time in my life. I had just been through a marriage breakup and I just moved in by myself. And I was adjusting to having my kids for kind of half the week and not. And I found Kavai on Instagram and saw that this really inspirational person was building ukuleles for their late wife. And I did some digging and some investigating and I just felt this vibe that the ukuleles that Coast were producing kind of had more love in them, like more story. I don't know. I sound very... It's very difficult to put this across because I, you know, this is my personal thoughts, which is why I put it at the end of the video rather than kind of leading with it. I don't like talking about Kavai's story as a professional thing, but more as a personal thing. I find Kavai very inspirational. When I met Kavai and the kids with Romeo in Petaluma in January, I just felt there was something really special going on there. You've got you've got somebody raising two children by themselves. You know, lost um, lost a partner when they were pregnant with a third child, and it's in, it's incredible how Kavai doesn't let that break break them. So, you know, as a family unit, those kids know all about those tools. Those kids are really involved in the process of building the ukuleles, and it's just lovely you know after so many years of being here at southern ukulele store um rob the old owner and i always like to invest in people you know we want to work with good people and i'm so happy that i can continue that because i've not really found a person more willing uh, more deserving of attention praise and just the platform that this YouTube channel can give them uh, than Kavai. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. I really hope that I didn't waffle on too much at the end. But those of you that have been following the channel for 10 years now, you'll know, you know, I'm an emotional guy. You know, it's not always just about the ukuleles, but it's so lovely when the ukuleles match the person. And that's what I find with the Coast ukuleles. So if you're a collector and you've got some very special one-off pieces in your collection, keep an eye on Kavai, keep an eye on Coast ukuleles because I think that in the years to come, uh, there's really, there's no, there's no one head and shoulders above Coast at the moment. And I think Kavai is just going to continue to get better. Um, I'm just delighted to be able to show them to you. So thank you for watching and uh, I'll be back very, very soon.